Hey y'all, I'm Elisa and I am the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and today I have an art journal process video for you. I'm going to be using some of the newer Jane Davenport stamps that are put out by Spellbinders called Whimsical and Wild. I got these from Scrapbook.com a few weeks ago and have been loving playing with them so I'm going to use those. And then I also had picked up this Dino Wakely collage paper and what I'm super interested in if you can see is that some of these collage patterns are done in white. So I'm going to see how well they work over some sprays and do some stamping and we'll see how it turns out. I will link all the supplies down below. So check those out if you're interested. Otherwise, let's go. Before I started this art journal process, I created some masks of the stamps that I was planning on using. And basically the way you create a mask is you take a random piece of cardstock. I like to choose a random color so I won't get it mixed up with what I'm working on. And you stamp the image on there and then you fussy cut it out. And you can use that to help you layer different images. So you can see I have my panda bear hug right here and I'm gonna grab some washi tape and secure that mask over top of the stamp. That way you are able to layer different pieces together and you will look like there's some depth, like one stamp will be hiding behind another. When you are masking, you want to start with the element that is going to be in the front. You can see I'm at the very end of my art journal. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting some clear stamps. So I'm having to work a little bit harder to get it done. So I'm adding again some washi tape on the back so that it won't be stuck down permanently, but that it will stay covered. And when I take those off, you'll see that the panda bear hug ends up being in front of the horse hug. So I'm just trying to layer up these fun stamps. They're all beautiful animals and kind of whimsical girls. And I love the phrase good vibe tribe. And that's actually from a mad confetti stamp set which is not one of the newer ones but still a Jane Davenport one and I just imagine that all of these kind of fairy ladies are with these animals and that they are totally the good vibe tribe so I have my elephant right here with the little tutu girl and again I will do the same thing where I just add that masking over the top and that just makes it a little bit more interesting once the stamping is done because the layering like i said adds some depth adds some perspective to what you're doing and just makes it a little bit more interesting to look at the hardest one to do um, were these smaller pieces this is kind of the leaping girl and the fox that she is leaping with and it's just hard to make sure that um because her legs are just so skinny and her arms are so skinny to make sure that those are down and covered. Um, so I just try my best, push them down. And then my very last piece I'm gonna work on is the stamp with this fox right here. I end up smushing a little bit too hard. I get not a great impression on that one, but that's okay. I end up adding a lot of color later on and so you cannot really tell once it is done. So all my stamps are on there. They're all masked and I left the mask on because ta-da! I'm going to play with some Distress Oxide Spray, one of my very favorite things to play with. A really fast way to add a lot of color to a page and you'll see I'm going to kind of go with a rainbow theme. I'm starting in the upper left hand corner adding in red. Next I come in with the pink and the pink actually doesn't hold its own quite like I thought it was going to. So I come take off a little bit it was a little excess i just wanted to see how it was going to blend adding in a little bit of orange i come back in with yellow and you can see i'm using the mask to protect the stamping underneath so that way none of this color is getting underneath where those elements are and i'm spraying right over the top of them and again just adding layers of spray having fun with it coming back with a towel cleaning it up i actually kind of like some of the texture that is left from the towel so i'm just kind of going with it but I did have a lot on here and when you started to smear it, it got smooth and the texture changed. It was just interesting to add the layers and the cool thing about these Distress Oxides is that they do layer really nicely. So I go through, make sure all that's dry and then ta-da, I pull up my masked pieces and you can see I have these gorgeous white stamped out images underneath and I'm super excited about how crisp it came out and how well the masking worked to keep the Distress Oxide spray away from my stamped images. Next I turn to the Dino Wakely collage paper 
to create a background and I'm not gonna lie I'm really disappointed in how it worked out I, my hope was that the images on this tissue paper were gonna be like super white like they would just pop off the page and that is not what happened at all as you can see it's super muted over top of that rainbow and it was muted on anything like if I'd put it on black you would have barely seen any white come through so I have that little bit of motif with the circles there I decided I don't want to waste any of the tissue paper so I'm gonna add some more of it up here but you can see it really doesn't it doesn't pop off the page at all you just you don't see it and so I decided well okay I'll go for the black so I'm gonna pull out some of the stars and it does it does work you can see the black it just didn't kind of melt into the page like I anticipated that it would and perhaps I should have done just a rougher uh, tear line I guess um, and I'm just layering here it just ends up feeling really heavy at the top with these black stars I will come in and blend some different ink on top of it later um, but at this point it's really wet there's a lot going on um, it feels heavy at the top so I want to add some more black at the bottom and so I pull out that same circle motif but this time in black and I'm gonna cut it in half so I have these half circles and I'm gonna add them kind of as an anchor on the bottom of the page and once I start doing that I see that my um, matte gel medium is making the distress oxide sprays react and kind of moving the color and I decide to kind of go with it so I go around the edges of some of my stamp images and gently bringing in the color at this point I'm thinking maybe I'll just leave them white with that little bit of color bleeding over I think that looks pretty cool um, but I end up changing my mind later on with that so I walked away, I let it dry completely and naturally instead of with my um, heated tool. And I will come back and I'm trimming off the edges. And you can see even when it's dry, you just don't get much from the white tissue paper or the white on top of the tissue paper. It's subtle, you can see it, but it's not, it's not a lot. Next step, I have this hard stencil. This is where it starts to get a little bit crazy. I'm using some texture paste, no color, just the paste. And I want to add hearts. And the idea was that these would be coming up from the girl giving a hug to the horse and the girl giving a hug to the panda bear. And it works. It just starts to look really busy on the page. So I'm going to add some more hearts over here. And I kind of like how that goes. And I decide, well, I'm just going to keep going because that's what I do. And so I pull up there and I decide well I'll add hearts for balance sake over here kind of like the elephant is blowing hearts out of its trunk so I add just a few over there on that side right around good vibe tribe and they just feel a little bit out of place to me I'm just not totally sure how to incorporate them more so I decide okay I'll come back to the hearts I'll let them dry now I have my mermaid markers and this is how I'm going to incorporate that tissue paper a little bit more on my page I pulled out the metallic ones the gold and the silver and then I start to work in a rainbow and I'm adding it to the top of the page just adding some color you can see it already brings those um, stars adding the color on top of that tissue paper really brings it in nicely so I kind of just plop color down up there and then I'm going to come back with my mini mister adding in water to those parts and letting it kind of move down the page and incorporate into the page i don't want it to go onto my stamped images so you can see i just dab up just a little bit here and there but i like that extra movement and how the distress spray reacts underneath and that's when i see oh i kind of like that these had a little bit of color on them so i come back I decide well these textured hearts should not be white instead they should be color so I'll be adding color around using my finger to kind of gently dab them and work some color into those hearts and I'm much more pleased with them once they have color they just feel less stark on the page it just felt a little bit off before so once they have a little bit of color to them um, they really incorporate uh, real nicely I pull out some green to fit into my rainbow scheme I have going on and again each time I add these mermaid markers I always like to add some water because they are super pigmented lots and lots of color in each of those markers so my background definitely does not feel done and I want to incorporate those stars up top to what's happening below and I think that I'm going to use some glitter markers these are the Jane Davenport glitzy markers 
that kind of work like paint pens, like glitter paint pens. And I'm using it to add a heart. And I decide I'll sketch out some larger hearts across the page. This does not work out like I planned, but for some reason I just keep going with the heart. So I add the heart here and I'll add it a few more places and pretty much these end up getting covered up later with my next solution that I end up being super pleased with. But you can see I thought, well, I'll just use these hearts to bring the pages together or bring the parts of the page together, but it's still pretty stark up there with those black star shapes and the hearts just didn't didn't work for me so the next part here's what happened my camera stopped part way but I take this stencil and I'm going to use a gold acrylic paint and with my pixie spray keeping the stencil nice and secure I go through it and you can see I add this acrylic paint over the top and I am super pleased with how that came out it brings in the circle motif that's at the bottom which are those half circles it covers up some of those gold or some of the black stars so it tones it down just a little bit and I think it brings the page together pretty nicely so I don't know why my camera cut off but basically what I did is just use a simple paintbrush I used the pixie spray to keep the stencil nice and secure and this particular acrylic paint does have a little bit of dimension to it so it adds some texture to the page. Now that I'm much more pleased with the background and kind of the top of this art journal entry, I'm going to come and give all of these animals a little bit of attention. And I decided I did not want to, in fact, leave them white. I wanted to add some color and I will just put this on super fast forward. You can see, I can imagine being able to color that fast, but I'm blending. I'm using my Prismacolor colored pencils, which blend super nicely. And I start out completely normal, a gray elephant, a silver elephant, totally expected, totally normal. But as you can see, these animals are the good vibe tribe and they don't live in the regular real world. So I want to add some more interest. I decide I'm going to add a little bit more of an elephant body right there. So I'm going to shade around right over here into what's um, happening below just so his head is not just floating freely adding some shading and I come back with a tusk and I decide this elephant is gonna have purple tusks and his matching friend is gonna have a purple tutu so I went with that theme throughout there will be one color element on each animal that kind of matches his little best fairy friend and I tried to do all the little fairies in some unexpected colors so they have unexpected skin tones and unexpected hair because these are definitely little magical creatures so I have my red fox over here and I'm gonna blend some different oranges and yellows and corals into that fox it's hard to see from this point of view but blending in some different colors pretty expected maybe a little bit bright for a fox and then I will continue that motif with his um, matching friend right next to him now where her matching comes in is in her skin tone and in her hair which kind of blends in with the fox and I decided for her dress she would blend in with the rainbow that was happening in the background so I went with greens because there were a lot of greens right behind her just blending in some different greens and a little bit of teal to add dimension and interest to her dress and it was super fun getting to work with my Prismacolor colored pencils. Let me know um, what colored pencils you like. These were one of the first art supplies I bought that were a nicer quality. When I got back into Bible journaling and art journaling and things like that, I had a lot of cheap supplies and I bought myself a nice set of Prismacolor pencils and loved them. And they were a wonderful investment. I'm so excited. I like, I like using them and I like, I've been getting back into them recently so I find it really relaxing to color with them so here I have my horse right here and then that is picked up in the hair of the next girl um, you see the pink matching from the horse's mane and then my girl that's hugging the horse is going to be a platinum blonde very bright golden blonde and then I will just choose a different skin tone for her I do start yeah she's gonna have a very yellow feel for her skin tone and then the panda is not anywhere close to what you would expect because he ends up being green, a bright green panda. And then the green will be pulled into the dress of the girl that he is hugging. So it was fun getting to mix and match and do some unexpectedness. And I think that's some of the fun of Jane Davenport art supplies and her stamps is that Yes, you could go totally expected and still get a whimsical feel, but use 
kind of typical colors, but they give you the freedom. Her art supplies just give you the freedom to just do what you want to create these um, kind of imaginary worlds where you have these animals hugging these little fairies. And it's just, it's fun to play with and fun to stretch your imagination and kind of your art abilities to incorporate some things that you're not used to doing. After I finished with my panda down here, adding just a little bit more around the edges, um, I decide that I'm gonna go over to that Good Vibe Tribe. I almost forgot that pod, did you see? There, remembered at the last second. So I'm gonna go to the Good Vibe Tribe and I'm going to incorporate several of the different colors around, but it's still going to remain mostly white so that it really stands out as the title of the page, just bringing in some more color. But as I was looking at my animals and my stance images, they felt a little flat to me. So I come back with a gold colored pencil and I'm gonna use that gold colored pencil to add in some shading beneath the animals. It's not a lot, it ends up being pretty subtle, but to me, it just adds a little bit more dimension and interest and helps incorporate them into the page a little bit more, just a little bit of shading to make sure that they are, um, I don't know, cohesive across the page. I don't know what it was. Something was just kind of driving me nuts. So I like the little bit of gold around them and then my page will be done. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. All the supplies are linked below as well as a link to sign up for my bi-weekly newsletter where I send art tips and organization hacks, just all kinds of scrappy fun. I hope you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.